he's he's base, main base company is, is a company called Base in, in the UK. So he's kind of more working on that European market. But yeah, I mean agents, agents, um, you know, they, they they can be good, they can be they could be good, they could be bad. I mean, I've had at least fifty agents approach me and say, "Do you want to go to Rwanda? Do you want to go to Dubai? Do you want to go to Asia? Do you want to go to America? Do you want to go?" And you know, and and then you, you say, "Oh yes, I wouldn't mind doing that." And then the next one is, "I've got this player from Cameroon. I've got this player from Senegal. I've got this player." You know, so they, they try and lure you in with a, a possible opportunity. The next, the next 20 messages are all fucking players that they want to trial or they want, to, they want you to sign, you know? So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, Paul's good. Paul's a good agent. You know, he's, he's straight down the line, Paul. So, but um, as of now, there's, there's, there's been nothing, there's been nothing happening. You know, we did try and get evidence McGropa to go to Denmark to FC, Co- I think it was FC Copenhagen. Um, but the 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 boy has 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 done the stupidest thing in my opinion, and and stayed in South Africa. He you know, had but, wait wait wait. He's with the agency that you're signed to, and he he had an offer to go. Yep, he turned it down. He turned it down. I don't. Uh, when I see him, I'm going to knock him out. Oh. That guy. I'm telling you now. That guy. Had he scored? Had he scored 10, 15 goals in Denmark? Would have been playing for Chelsea next year. Would have been playing oh. for Arsenal. Would have been playing. Could be playing for Bayern Munich. Could be playing for uh, PSG. Could be playing for a Spanish top Spanish team, top Italian team. If he'd have scored 15 goals, and he would, and 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 in my opinion, he would have done that at a canter, and he he would have been earning. You know, probably a million, a million rand, a million rand a week, he would have been earning, minimum, minimum, he would have been earning a million rand, and he went and signed for somebody for forty thousand rand a week. He makes sense, eh? So he just moved. So there's a, <laughs> he's moving somewhere. I thought he was. He's signed for. Ah, he signed for Pirates, but he's gone back on loan. He's gone back on loan to Barocca. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Orlando Pirates haven't got a striker. <laughs> they've, got, they've got the best young and up-and-coming South African striker. You know, um, the, 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 they're going to loan back to Barocca. Give me a piece. <laughs> but you, you can't tell these people anything. You can't, can't, they can't see sense. This he is- could have been in Europe and never come back to South Africa again. In my opinion, he could be playing in the Premier League next year. <laughs> Not next year, this year after. One year in Denmark, and then they'll have sold him for big money. Big money. Because he's a good kid. He's a good kid. He's got set. I saw him, I saw him in, at the Olympics, where mm. it's kind of a pressure test. And he just looks so calm, composed. First touch, he has it. The calmness, yeah. the coolness in front of goal, he has it. Left foot, right foot, he has that. He has the height to... He... Yeah. Everything, everything. He, he... Could have been, he could have been Lukaku. He could have been Lukaku, potentially. He could have been Lukaku, because he'd have gone over and he'd, got, he'd, have gone to, he'd have gone to Denmark and worked in a proper environment. He'd have trained in a proper environment. It would have been put on a on a on a very very strict gym re- re- regime to, to 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 stock him up, um, and I think I I I I believe if he'd have gone, he would have been playing in the English Premier League, if not um, Spain, France, Germany, or Italy. He would have been playing at a top club because he's got, he's a raw talent. He's a raw talent that I found playing MDC as a midfielder, and then I brought him into training. Played him in midfield against Hungry Lions in the cup. He was absolutely horrendous. And I said, no, this guy's a forward. Get it. So I took him, I swapped him at half time. I put him up front. Never looked back. Never looked back. <laughs> so you were the one that, so he was playing, or oh, when you were coaching for Baraka, you gave him his first team. Yeah. He was, he was playing for MDC and I went to watch him twice and I loved him. 
I loved him. He was playing as a number 10 um, and he was doing all right. Um, and against Kaiser Chiefs, he did very, very well. And I brought him into training and I gave him his debut against Hungry Lions a week later. Um, it, didn't, it didn't work for him in midfield as a number 10. It didn't work for him. So I put him up front. I put him up front and never looked back. He never looked back. So him playing in midfield, that's where all the controlling, how he can control the ball comes from. Because now his link-up play mm. is very good and he can control mm. the ball very well. And even his, mm. okay, he still has to work on some of his runs, but yeah, but he, he can, he, those are things mm. he can work on. And Pirates had, yeah. um, have Zakele Lepasa, who I think works very well for Zimbabwe because now mm. they have, uh, but he's been injured since January. I don't know what's going on with David. Yeah. yeah. I say he's, it's, um, it's, he's going back to Barocca on loan, so it's, he's, he'll, and Pirates haven't got a striker. So I, I, I spoke to Mandela last week. I said, Mandela, you, you've got you've got the best striker in South Africa, <laughs> you know, but you've lo- you've loaned you've, you've loaned him back to Barocca, so you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> the, mismanag- the mismanagement that goes on, but anyway, and I'd actually like to talk to. Uh, it's actually nice talking to coaches, how you guys actually plan and how you guys actually talk and how, how you guys think. Actually, it's, it's, it's quite nice. It's refreshing because sometimes you get to speak to players and just to get the other side of, of the story, how you guys yeah. find players like evidence. And you, uh, you saw that, nah, this is not working. Let me try and put him up there. What actually made you say this guy is an archetypal forward what are, what are the qualities that he had in order to be a, for you well, to he, 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 he didn't have, he didn't have the he didn't have the pace a midfielder needs to have mm. you know and i played the chairman of Barocca told me that this zimbabwean we had who was a midfielder played for the national team as a striker you know so um so i, I gambled i put him up front and, and he, he, he was he was it was, wasn't working uh, evidence was playing in midfield as a number ten. It wasn't working, but I could look. I could see the, his, his, his stature. He's tall, and he's got a lengthy stride. And and I, and I decided, just, you know, it, it, for me, he'd be better as a striker, target man. You know, but not not just solely as a target man like Nurkovic. He can actually run in behind. He can make runs, and he did very very well. He did very very well against uh, Hungry Lions, and. No, for, for, the rest is history. He's, 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 he was always in my team. He's always started. And he started big last year. I think he got seven goals, which is a bit mm. poor, really. But, mm. you know, um, it's the way <laughs> Barocca <laughs> play. doesn't help him. So, but no, I mean, for, for him, for him, for him not to, not to go abroad, you know, he's, he's, he's going to regret it for the rest of his life. There may be an opportunity for, for him to go still. Mm. But, you know, at 21... 21, he could have had one good season in Den- Denmark and he could have been the next Lukaku for me. And he's just, and he's going to, he's going to uh, sign for uh, Chelsea for 94 million. Yeah. Uh, pirate. So you can imagine how, you know, imagine how angry his agent is. <laughs> his agent sold him for, his agent sold him for 15 million rand. For 15 million. <laughs> but that's that's a good the, price in South Africa. But he could have been so far more. The, the beauty of the, the as well as a, a former Liverpool player called Stig Bjornaby, uh, uh that that actually spotted him. Mm. Um, and and he sorry, I've just got to replace this message. And and he actually he had, he'd watched him a few times on 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 the internet. And they, you know, they they they, they offered, and like I said they offered thirteen million plus two, and uh, the, the chairman of Broca turned it down. Ooh, Leicester, a lot less. Leicester. They start, they start, no, uh, uh, a guy called Stig Bjornaby who used to be, yeah. at, uh, who used to be at Liverpool. Uh, he's now he's now technical director in in, in Copenhagen. Oh, so, Denmark. So that's where the Denmark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but, but hey, he'll, he'll live to regret it. Yeah, he'll live they've, to regret it. They've just signed Luther Singh, if I'm not mistaken. It's them, I think. It's they have, 
they have, you know. So he was already in Portugal anyway. So yeah, <laughs> you know, he's had a good World Cup. So they're signing him, yeah. But uh, you know, it's 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 crazy. I mean, Masonda. When I was at Black Leopards, we got him a uh, a contract in Greece at AEK Athens. You know, and and they wanted to pay eight million rand for him, and the chairman wanted double. You know, and, and obviously Masonda were going to get two hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. euros signing fee, mm-hmm. and then he was going to get I think it was it was on about two hundred and fifty euro uh, no two hundred and fifty thousand rand mm-hmm. um, a month they were offering, and the chairman turned it down, and a year later he let him go for free, <laughs> so he could have got eight million for him. Masonda would have been very very happy and wealthy in Greece. You know, good, good, Goodman Marcel. Goodman Marcel was offered uh, to a team in Israel for, I think, 11 million. Yeah. You know, but he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. He wanted to stay in South Africa. Yeah. We try and help people. So if I ever offer you a job as a pundit in, 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 in England, don't tell me no. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> I'd leave within the blink of an eye. Like to be honest, I'd leave. I'd swim. There. I'd, I'd swim. <laughs> so Goodman Masale had a chance to go abroad, and this is one of yeah. the things that I was talking about. I, I always talk to people about this that South African players have become too comfortable playing in South Africa. When we were at our best, most of our players were playing abroad. And when you check at most uh, African countries that actually dominate bar, e- bar Egypt, they usually yeah. have they play players playing abroad. Well, I say it's, I just think it's a no-brainer to, to, to just go and do something with your career. Um, it is to play abroad, to play at the best level you can do, because you can always come back to South Africa. Mm. Um, in fact, while we're on this, I'm just going to send a message to Dean Furman, right? Mm. I got him a trial. I got him fixed up with a trial at Wrexham. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So he played yesterday, and I've just said any news because uh, my friend is the manager at Wrexham, and I told him all about Dean Furman, and he's been on trial all week, and I think he had a game yesterday, and if if he if he did well, I think we're going to offer him a contract. So I've just sent Dean a wee message. So see how I get. See, so even even I didn't know Dean Furman only from a player. You know, when I knew he was England and I knew he was free, um, I spoke to my friends. That I've spoke to a few clubs and told them, you know, sign this Dean Furman. He's a good player. Mm. So I forgot that his, his game was yesterday. So I've just asked him quickly, how's he gone on? Any news? I want 50%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and it's actually so strange. I usually think that most of these players don't have uh, what's this a chance, or they usually don't have chances to actually go abroad. But now, actually speaking to you, most of these players have actually had a chance to go abroad, and they've turned it down. Mm, you know, it's like I say, you know, it's it's their choice, you know. But you know, and, and I've always, like I said, I'm, I'm, I've lived by the motto of no regrets, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Whatever I've done, you know, I've done, and, and, mm. and, and more, I would say ninety-five percent of it has been absolutely brilliant. Mm. But that's me. That's me. I'm different. You know, I took a chance to come to South Africa as an eighteen-year-old to leave my mum, leave my dad, leave my brother, my sister, leave all my friends to come and follow my dream, which is playing football. And it, it made me who I am today, mm. uh, a better person. Like those three years being in this country made me a better person. Um, and and it and it's and it's so nice when I walk down the streets in Polokwane and, and old older people that are selling sweets on the street corner will shout at me and say, "Coach, I remember when you played at Arcadia Shepherds. I remember when you scored a goal against Sundowns. I remember when you scored a goal against Chiefs." I re-